I wanted to come back to this topic about the short film that was released with the CGI dinosaur in the General Assembly Hall because we really didn't get a chance to break this thing down. And there are a couple of things that I noticed that I want to address here. Understand that this is the first time the UN has done this. Think about that. And think about why would the UN take the time and resources to produce such a short film? What would be the purpose of this? Well, this of course is a message. And I think most people would be under the impression that this is a message to the world. But the question I have is, who is this message really from? And who is it really for? Well, it's from the UN and it's for the world. Uh, I doubt that. First of all, the UN is not in the business of making films. It was, of course, commissioned to be made for the UN to present. United Nations Don't Choose Extinction by Murray Butler and Framestore. Framestore Pictures, director Murray Butler, and the Framestore Creature VFX team resurrect a 70 million year old Utah Raptor voiced by Jack Black, to deliver a message about the dangers of fossil fuel subsidies and their contribution to our own extinction. Timed to air ahead of the COP26 climate change conference in Glasgow and driving viewers to don'tchooseextinction.com, the spot was created for the United Nations Development Program through Activista in Los Angeles. Now, I have tried to find out if anyone else has taken this video to break it down. Well, let break down as to the things that stood out. And there are several people who have discussed this and they share some insightful information and opinions. I looked at this thing closer and I have to say there are a couple of things that got my attention. So let's get into this because sometimes messages like this get misinterpreted, whereas people think it is a plea to the world, but to me, it comes across more like a warning. So look, folks, does anyone else get the feeling that this whole climate change thing is a bit outside of your control? I mean, I don't know what they want us to do, except die. I mean, honestly, because I'm going to point something out to you guys, and this did not sit well with me at all. It really bothers me when governing bodies like this want you and I to teach our children what they want us to teach them. It really bothers me. Anyway, they wanted to use this commercial or film, whatever you want to call it, to drive traffic to a website called don'tchooseextinction.com. I may have to rant here for a minute, but I visited the site. It is a simple, colorful, yet interactive. I noticed they put up a children's book entitled The Birds and the Bees and the Facts of Life. Excuse me. The facts of saving life. By using this book, kids can give their parents the talk about why we need to phase out fossil fuels because only if we all work together can we save the birds, the bees, and this place we call home. So first of all, birds and bees don't hang out together. Well, that's not true. Both birds and bees do like bird baths. Those of you who have bird baths outside probably know that. But what we all know is that the birds and the bees is referring to sex and babies. So why, on God's green earth, would they use this theme to present to children about saving the planet? What does having children have anything to do with saving the planet? Oh, oh. 
the book is about how birds and bees help in producing food in nature to be consumed by humans and how we smoked up the planet. They basically want to educate your kids about how CO2 is bad. I know they don't want you guys to have any more kids. So, moving on. So when breaking down this film, there is something that stands out above everything, including the dinosaur. And that are the blue lit name placards that all say United Nations or don't choose extinction on them. But there are a few countries in there that they didn't completely blur out in purpose. And the countries I could make out are Mexico, Nicaragua, Kiribati. So let's take a closer look at what is going on with those countries, shall we? Climate change. Mexican president slams COP26 hypocrisy. Published November 4th. Mexican president Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador Wednesday slam participants in a major UN climate summit for their hypocrisy, accusing them of failing to address the root cause of the crisis and pointing to their use of private jets. The world's top business and political figures are gathered in Glasgow this week for COP26, which is aimed at forging an ambitious new climate agreement. But Mexico's leftist leader, also known as AMLO, dismissively compared the summit to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, known for its eye-watering prices and elite chin-wagging. These summits resemble those in Davos, says Lopez Obrador, among the heads of state who choose not to attend COP26, describing WEF attendees as technocrats and neoliberals. Okay, so that's Mexico. Nicaraguan exiles sink roots in Costa Rica as Ortega set for re-election. Published November 7th. Nicaraguans forced to flee across the country's southern border into Costa Rica expressed a mix of anger, pain, and resignation ahead of Sunday's election, where President Daniel Ortega is expected to extend his long rule after cracking down on rivals. Is this creeping you guys out yet? Here's what's going on with Kiribati, which is an island nation in the Pacific Ocean, which is why many of you may have not heard of it. Anote's Ark, the sinking island of Kiribati, published also November 4th. The president of a sinking Pacific island nation became a leading voice in global climate change diplomacy. By the end of this century, the Pacific island nation of Kiribati will cease to exist disappearing beneath an ocean rising ever higher as a result of climate change. The country's former president, Anote Tong, travels the world trying to secure a future for his people. Back home in Kiribati, a family makes the tough decision to relocate to New Zealand. Their story underlines how hard even the best possible future will be for climate refugees. Kiribati is the proverbial canary in the coal mine when it comes to climate change. Now, do you guys think that this is coincidence? There is another country I couldn't quite make out with the beginning letters M-O-N. Now, that could be Monaco, Montenegro. It is probably Monaco, given the fact that they are considered the leaders in sustainability. But at the same time, their leader flies to the COP26 summit in a private jet. Now, is this message a possible subtle warning to the nations mentioned because there has to be some reason you picked those countries to show was it just random i don't think so they even demonstrate that they have complete control of the depth of field when the when they purposely bring one of those placards into focus at the right time so i think these countries may be places to keep an eye on just to see what happens you know I do tend to believe that sometimes people may place messages into media by spiritual influence, whether that influence comes from the good side or the bad. They may not even know why they are putting certain things in the message. Do you want to know what is interesting about this 
dinosaur now? Well, this is a Utah raptor, named after the place it was found. Now, is Utah significant? Well, a Republican in Glasgow. Conservative Climate Caucus founder Republican John Curtis looks to bring GOP up to speed. Given that former President Barack Obama entered the U.S. into the Paris Climate Accord, only to have his successor, Donald Trump, reverse course and pull out of the agreement. And that President Biden's ambitious climate proposals have received no outward GOP support. It can be tempting to think that no Republican lawmaker is concerned about climate change. But Republican John Curtis of Utah bristles at that perception. The founder of the Conservative Climate Caucus, which has over 60 members. Curtis is attending the conference known as COP26 along with a small delegation of other Republicans. And unlike 2015's Paris Climate Summit, when Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma was the sole attendee from his party and who came ready to dispute that climate change was a problem that needed solving, Curtis is upfront about the urgency of lowering greenhouse gas emissions just like the dinosaur. Now, what's going on in the state of Utah? Take your pick. There's a whole lot going on over there right now. Just go read the news about what's happening in Utah. What does this all mean? Well, the message is don't go extinct. And if we keep our eye on these places and people, we may have that revealed to us soon. Or, we could just take the message at face value and leave it at that. It could be nothing at all. Just coincidences. Or I could have stumbled onto something I shouldn't have. On that note, there is more to come. I'd like to see your thoughts on this one. Do you see what I see? Do you see something different? Something that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, folks, be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. Let's get our week started right, shall we? God bless, and everyone stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.